Hello and welcome to High Caliber TV, your source for figure and model updates every Wednesday and Friday. Today on the workbench I'm going to be doing my second part of the ground up build of Evolution Miniatures Special Operator in Afghanistan or the early war period. So on this particular episode I'm going to be showing the all important process of blocking or base coating your primary colors. As Shep Payne described, I also recommend that you start and plan your painting process with how the person would get dressed in mind. And that sounds a little weird, but it makes a lot of sense. So you start with the trousers, then you go to the shirt, the vest, the boots, um, gear, weapon, etc. A lot of people start with the flesh and detail that before they go on to anything else. And I understand why they do that, but I personally don't just out of habit. That being said, I did start by blocking in the flesh color and I also blocked in the weapon in the same color. Now the logic behind this is that on the box art they show the figure as having sprayed his M4 Sop mod with a layer of Duracoat. It's a really ugly mustard yellow brown color and they did this to, they still do it to protect the metal from dust and attrition and also to help the weapon blend in to your uniform so from a distance it doesn't look like you're carrying a weapon necessarily. What I'm going to do is build up the color to that yellow mustard brown, but the great thing about undercoating with this particular color of brown is that every single thing in life actually has a bit of brown in it because when you mix all the colors together, you get brown. So if I decide midway through that I want to make a tiger stripe with green and brown or just all a different colored tan, I can do that on the fly. The details on this weapon that I'm going to be including are the fact that the ACOG is going to look like the operator removed it or didn't have access to the gun sight when he sprayed the Duracoat on and that's just to give the weapon a little bit more character. The Stanag of course is going to be uh, just a dark gray for the steel and the carbon burns on the muzzle brake are going to be painted on. So the head and the hat were all painted the same mix. This helps out a lot when I start to blend up the skin tone it's going to be a very tan color because he's in the desert. So. The great thing about this brown is that it'll help me do that and it'll also make painting the facial hair, the hair coming out of the back of his hat, his tan cap, all those details will all benefit from a base color of the mix that I chose. And the mix was these two bases from Citadel Miniatures. Uh, it doesn't really matter that they're base colors. I know why they're called base colors. They're thicker, they go on a bit better, but I always add so much water to the colors, especially on a base coat, that they get a lot of flow and it's not really out of the pot anymore, it's a lot of water. I highly recommend that you do that, especially if you're not spraying the color on, that you add a lot of water and flow to your acrylics so that they don't... their footprint is a lot less than it may or may not otherwise be, and that preserves the details and the sharpness, especially on resin where the sharpness is the whole reason why you buy the figure. You want to preserve that in the initial stages. The next phase, obviously, is the were the trousers, the boots. His knee pads are going to be black to break up the monotony of the garment, but for now I'm just leaving them because they need to be blocked in something. So when I chose this color, I chose Vallejo Panzer Aces Light Mud. I want that light mud color to be the color of the trousers. That's the field that the camouflage is based on. And I, my thought process was that I want that color to be the color, but I cut it down with brown to simulate the shadows. What you're looking at are the shadows on the figure right now. I'm going to highlight up and blend with 
colors like this. It used to be bleach bone is what I went to as a standard, but they obviously replaced that when they changed over. So those are the colors I'm going to be using now. I'll go into highlights in the next video, so I'm not going to dwell on that now. The next phase were the shirt and the tactical vest. The shirt color is actually this, but as you can see, the blue is a little bit too happy-go-lucky, funky, fresh for a special operator. So I cut it down with black. I really highly recommend that you use black sparingly when you're cutting down colors for base coats because no shadow in reality is actually black. They're all variations of dark brown or dark gray. So if you just use black and especially if you like I used to use just black and it can look good on fantasy or science fiction figures because you know they're in the void or whatever but in reality light casts gray or dark brown shadows so I highly recommend that you use black and cut it down with a bit of gray or a bit of brown just to take the edge off because it'll end up looking a bit odd uh, the shirt as you can see is blue but sort of in name only it's a really dark blue and my thought process on this garment was that while special operators then and now have a lot of leeway they have a, a really relaxed dress code that's why they're allowed to grow beards and such they still have to dress for combat and most likely he would be wearing a dark green or a dark blue t-shirt whenever possible he wouldn't wear white or orange or red blah 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 because Dark blue and dark green naturally allow you to blend in at night to your surroundings. The tactical vest is uh, just a really, a really friendly sort of uh, all-encompassing green that I picked up from Citadel. I highly recommend you get this color because it's just all-purpose. It's lighter than gunship green, the standard U.S. military green uniform, uh, but it's also not too pale. It's not too bright. I cut that down with a mixture of black and the dark brown that I showed earlier because as I said this is the shadows of the figure. This isn't what it's going to look like in the end. I toyed with the idea of making the tactical vest tan or even possibly camouflaged but all my references pointed to the fact that these operators were given maybe not as much uh, options with their gear as they should have had as they have now they a lot of times had gear that would have been suited for Europe or the jungle whereas they were obviously operating in the Middle East that happened to a lot of countries it still does but uh, the budget obviously for US military operations in Afghanistan now is a lot higher than it was back then so the kafia that he's wearing the Arab garment that allows them to blend in a little bit better not a lot. I just left it the primer gray. I'm gonna paint an off-white on it in the detail section and then add red stripes. I'll go into that later. So I hope you enjoyed this more or less rambling show of my blocking in colors on this figure and tune in next time for the details and the highlights so the camouflage, the weapon, all that sort of stuff. I want to point out that Alan and I went down to IPMS Seattle on Saturday. Check out our Facebook page for up-to-date photos of that. I'll be re releasing them every day for the next while until I run out of photos, basically. Also, I want to mention that our famous Add to Cart glitch is finally resolved. I sincerely apologize to anyone who has shopped with us in the past and was unable to. I hope that you give us a chance to impress you again. Follow us on Facebook, Pinterest, and Twitter for daily updates. For this figure and many more like him, be sure to check us out at highcaliberminiatures.com. I'll put the link in the description below. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.